Hello. <coughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to Integrated Math 2019 Paper 1. Okay. Question 1. This item refers to the following argon diagram. So which of the complex numbers is this argon diagram? Now we know that the x-axis is positive because it's to the right. No, the y-axis is negative. So we're looking for 1 minus 4. I, because the y-axis is always imaginary, so that would be A. Okay, now let's just mark it and to, to make sure that we got it right. Yeah, okay, next question. So, the x, as I said, the x-coordinate is 1 and the y-coordinate is negative 4. So, question 2. If z is equal to 1 plus i square root 3, then r z is equal to... So, if we look at this chart for the tan inverse of different um angles right if we tan inverse because the imaginary square root three so if we say it square root three divided by the real because that's the equation right square root three imaginary divided by the real which is one that would be the tan inverse of square root three okay if we look the value is pi over three okay so now that I got my pen back, let's just mark it, pi over 3, and this one was 1 minus 4. Alright, let's move on. Question 3. <clears throat> this item refers to the following quadratic graph. So which of these is this quadratic graph? Let me show you the steps to answer this question. So the first step is to find the y-intercept. What is the value at which x is equal to 0 where the graph crosses the y-axis? Y that they pointed us to be negative 3 right here okay next step find the x intercept the x intercept now would be with x values when the quadratic is equal to 0 so that means the quadratic is solvable so the points that they gave us is negative 1 and 3 okay now the next step we're going to use this general equation to find this functions equation okay the general equation says x squared minus the sum of roots x plus the product of roots is equal to zero so the sum of roots which would which be negative a half plus three x plus the product of the roots which would be negative a half times three okay when you work that out that would be the sum of the roots being equal to five divided by two the product of the roots being three divided by two if you realize these don't have any divided by two but they have a 2x squared. So where did that 2 come from? Well, they multiplied out the 2. They realized it had something common. They multiplied out the 2. So now we're looking for the c being equal to negative 3. Okay. And the, and the 5, because all of them have 5 and 3s, being positive. So that eliminates us to either c or, I mean, either d or a. Okay. Now what makes the difference? It's A because, as I said, we're looking for a positive 5. So the answer there is A. Okay. Question 4. If x minus 3 is less than 4x plus 1, then what is the value of x? Okay. Let's go through this one quickly. Firstly, this is an inequality. So therefore, your goal is to make it equal. So you're trying to add 3 to both sides. When you add 3 to both sides, it is going to be x is less than 4x plus 4 so now you're simplifying it further and you're going to subtract 4x from both sides you're trying to get it being equal as it stands you have x they're not equal so you're going to subtract 4x from both sides you're going to be left with negative 3x is less than 4 then the next step after you have this you're going to say multiply both sides by negative because x cannot be negative they said then x positive okay so after you've made x positive, we're going to say 3x is less than negative is greater than negative 4. You're going to just simply transpose the 3 off as of the coefficient of x. And you're going to get x being greater than negative 4 divided by 3. That is the choice D. Great. Let's move on. We're on great progress. Question 5. Okay. The log 16 divided by log 2 is equal to. This is obviously <laughs> logarithmic rules. So you're going to apply one of the rules that says the log 
of C log of base C B divided by log of base C A is equal to log A of B. This is saying that whatever the base is, I should be able to put it to a power of what the answer is and I'll get what the actual value was that I was asked to find. So let me repeat that. You're going to say the, the, the base of B, C right here, 10 to the value of whatever the answer is should give me the subject of the question. Let me show you what, I, what does that mean. So log 16 divided by log 2. Both of them are in base 10. Oops. Both of them are in base 10. So if we say now base 10, okay, log 2, 16, we're going to rewrite it in power base format to, to, to have it in a, a format where we can use the base power and get it to the value of the answer. So we're going to say log base 2 of 2 to the 4. That gives us 16. So 2 to the 4. You apply the log rule that says that the, the power of the <coughs> value of x can be put in front as a, as a coefficient. So now we're going to put the 4 in front. Get 4 log 2. We apply the log rule that says the base and 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 the value and the subject is really the same is equal to one. Then we get the answer being four multiplied by one. Answer is a right there. So let me recap real quick. We applied this log rule first. Then we simplified to the smallest base. Then we applied another log rule here. Then we simplified again. Then we add another log rule. So in essence, we did three log rules in this question. So that's the approach you guys need to always understand. There's not just one method. There's always method to the madness. <laughs> so question six. Given that y is equal to minus x squared minus 2x plus 3, this can be written as y is equal to negative x plus 1 all squared plus 4. So what is the maximum point? Okay. What is maximum point? Maximum point, in essence, is basically the furthest point of the graph, the highest peak, the peak of the graph, okay? So, in order to find the maximum point, we're going to rewrite this equation that they gave us, the y is equal to, in the form of the general form of our, of our binomial expression, which is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. When we rewrite this in the form, we get y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 5 parabola which is simply the shape of the graph are so the, the, the determinants of the parabola are a b and c we can class it as the co as the coefficients of x squared x and the constant c so we're going to say since we have one as a negative two as b and c as five we can then use the determinant equation which is to find the vertex and that would be the, the maximum point so in other words, there is either vertex or maximum point. These two are saying the same thing. The vertex of anything is the highest peak. The maximum point of anything is the furthest peak. Same thing. So when we work that out further, we find that the value is negative 2 divided by 2. That's negative 1. Then we're going to try to find the y component of that x value. So to find the y component, we simply plug in the one into this equation, the transpose. Okay, let me show you what that looks like. And if you want, you can pause the video and read further through the steps. Question seven. Question seven. The gradient of the line which passes through the points P, negative six, negative four, and Q, four, negative three is, <coughs> so the gradient in essence, is always going to be the rise over run. But what if you have two points? That means you're going to have two rises and two over runs, right? That is simple explanation. So to write two rises and over two runs, you simply just say y2 divided by x2 minus x1 minus y1 divided by x1. That's basically what it's saying. That is what this equation is saying. So when we work that further, plug in the values, okay? You find that after we add and subtract and all these madness, we get the fraction value being equal to negative 1 divided by 10. Oh, no, 1 divided by 10. 
Okay, that is C. Question 8. If T is equal to AX to the 10, forgive my eyes, then what is the value of when you log it? So we're going to apply the log rule that says that when you have the base and the subject, you can split them into components of that base since they're the same. So we're going to say, for example, if we had um, instead of A, we had 5 and instead of um, N, this is N up here, we had 2, we would split those into ln5 and ln x squared. So this would be ln a plus ln x to the n. ln a plus ln x to the n and we can carry it down and get the n in front. As I said before, so that would be a. <coughs> Question 9. If x minus 3 is a factor of x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus a, then what is the value of a? Okay, let's just quickly go through this one. So, if they gave you a factor of anything, first of all, to have a factor of anything, that value or that equation must be divisible. So that means it must be perfect or it must be equal to 0. So if they said x minus 3 is a factor, you transpose of the equal sign, you call it 0 and you're going to get x being equal to 3. Okay, so then we're going to plug this 3, right? We're going to plug this 3 into that equation, right there. We're going to plug it right into the equation. So we're going to get 3 squared minus 3 cubed minus 3 squared minus 9 times 3 plus a. Work it out, you multiply the numbers, you're going to get the value being subtracted here. Then you're going to have a minus 9 is equal to 0. Transpose, you get a is equal to 9. Pause the video as I said, and you can find the steps as, as seen below. Question 10. Okay, question 10. If 2 to the x is equal to 5, then x is equal to, right, let's solve this one. If 2 to the x is equal to 5, remember, a function, if, if the function x is equal to the other function of g, then ln fx should give you ln of g. Right, we should know this. So ln 2 to the x is equal to ln 5. Then you apply the log rule that says the x can be outside. Right, x can be outside. You then say x ln 2 is equal to ln 5. You solve for x by transposing the ln 2 over the bracket. Why? Over the equation sign. Why? Because in a general form, if you have 5 by itself, that is a function because you can actually plug in any equation and you will get 5. So therefore, you had to be, it had to be solved. So that means it's a g of x, it's a function. So if you transpose the ln2 over this equal sign, then that will give us the value of x. So therefore, the answer is a. Okay, next question. We have reached the end. I hope you enjoyed this first 10 questions of the module 1. The next video in the series will be module 2 and module 3 as followed. 